Why would no. they go out and intentionally <laughs> right. screw people over? That would, that would be a lawsuit. I mean, you'd have whistleblowers inside the insurance company that would alert the media to that. Oh. So, I mean, For sure. I always heard, find a way to pay the claim. And like you said, there's yeah. some things a policy doesn't pay for because uh, the, the premiums are priced based upon what an insurance policy pays for. It pays for If it paid for everything, nobody would be able to afford insurance. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Yeah, reconciliation is really just uh, working out the differences with the contractor. And if that's the contractor the insured is going to use, then I try to get as much money to them as possible. At some point, there just may be a difference. And most of the time, the contractor will do it for the insurance company's scope um and it just shows you how much uh not really fluff but it just shows you that there is a lot of uh profit built into some of those estimates yeah 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 and that may be the other thing is that they just you know they forgot to put overhead and profit on it because it's a big it's a you know they're they're coordinating the efforts of you know a bunch of different subcontractors and you know the electrical has to be done before the drywall goes on, right? And if you've got those backwards because you don't have somebody managing all that stuff, then you're, this work's not going to get done. And I think the bottom line really is, is, you know, think about it in terms of um, what, how are we going to get a customary and reasonable, re reasonable, right? Being a big part of the customary and reasonable, but both of those are important um, dollar figure for this, right? If the contractor comes in to do the work that's, for the scope and is spending money out of his own pocket because he's, he didn't get enough money for it. Then that's not exactly reasonable. That's not fair to that guy. Right. It, and it's, it doesn't make any sense anyway. Um, the our property insurance, I think is, is pretty different than health insurance. Um, and then even than auto insurance, um, because we are, you know, and I may be, Speaking a little bit out of turn here, I think, but I I think that with with the property insurance, when we try to go get an agreed scope of repairs uh, or agreed pricing, that um, we're not trying to find ways to not pay for stuff. We're just trying to not to find ways to not pay for stuff that we don't need to pay for or that we can't pay for, right? Because the policy, and this just is, I think, is just a general insurance thing. I think there's a, a, a misunderstanding out there amongst the general public, as well as public adjusters and contractors, that insurance is, should pay for everything, right? It's like remodeling insurance. Well, the homeowner right. wants to put, you know, they've got three tab on now where they want to put standing seam on there. Well, the insurance company, you know, you need to get what you deserve and you deserve a standing seam roof on your house, which is going to be four times what a three tab is. It's just not the case. It's the policy is a contract, right? And both parties sign it more or less, right? So the homeowner is bound by this contract the same way that the insurance company is bound by the contract. And the contract says that there are things that aren't, that aren't covered, right? That aren't paid for and there, or that there are limits to certain things, right? Um, we can't go outside of that, right? It's, it's not, we just, we don't have the power as adjusters to say, well, yeah, you're, um, according to the policy, you know, I'm not really supposed to pay for mold or pay for this wear and tear thing or whatever, but, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, because I think you're, you're cool or I like you or you deserve it or I owe you, we owe you, or it's just not the way it works. Um, it, it, we, we, as, especially as independents and even as a staff adjuster, I was never told, and I'm, I, and maybe you have a different experience. I doubt it. But I was never told, well, let's go try and find ways to not pay for stuff, right? Let's, let's see, just, just get away with this paying as little as possible. It's never happened. Never once in 20 years did it happen to me. No, I worked at State Farm for 25 years, and I always heard, find a way to pay the claim. And so these people that say yeah. the insurance companies are out to screw people, they're not. They're never going to get sued for paying a claim. No. So why no. would they go out and intentionally... <laughs> right. uh, screw people over that would, that would be a lawsuit i mean you'd have whistleblowers inside the insurance company that would alert the media to that uh -oh. so oh, i mean for sure 
I always heard, find a way to pay the claim. And like you said, yeah. there's some things the policy doesn't pay for because uh, the the premiums are priced based upon what an insurance policy pays for. It pays for if it paid for everything, nobody would be able to afford insurance. If you want to watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad-free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.